It's a little known secret that they save the best sessions for right after lunch. So you guys are in for a treat today. Well, again, my name is Kevin McClure, and it's a privilege to serve you guys. Uh, what I want to do today is walk through some of the basics of using Accordance on your iOS device. And before I do that, I just want to say why I so appreciate Accordance on iOS devices. Uh, I use Accordance on my iPhone almost every single week. And just the other day, I'm out to lunch with some friends. We're digging into some burritos. There's four of us. And someone mentions, you know, what is the sin that leads to death in 1 John 5.16? Now, this is not always the lunch conversation of the day, but at this day, that's the question. And so they started talking about it. I got out my phone, clicked on my Accordance app, and then instead of just four people talking about 1 John 5.16, I invited to the conversation two or three world-class scholars who just happened to have written a commentary on 1 John. And I did that through my index finger. Using your index finger, you can bring to any conversation almost uh, a small theological library. You guys can see on the screen, I just opened up Accordance and I have my basic screen. And from the very beginning, you see it's a sleek design that doesn't have a lot of clutter on it. Actually, you can't see any buttons right now. It's just the text. And so if you want to, you can scroll through the text. And if you want to see the menu, all you do is just click once and you see the menu buttons. And what we'll do here is we'll just start at the bottom and then work counterclockwise our way through these menus. So if you look at the bottom, I know it's a little bit difficult to see on the screen. You have these navigation arrows that can navigate you through different chapters of different books. So I just press it down, go to Ephesians 3.1, down again, Ephesians 4.1, or back and forth between different searches. So if I search for Revelation right now and then uh, went there and then click the back button, I would go back to Ephesians 4.1 after I've made that search. So these are your navigation tools. On the bottom right is an icon that will bring up another pane. So you click it, and let's say I want to see the Greek New Testament behind this passage. I can click that icon right on the bottom right, and it comes right up. And uh, if I didn't want to use that icon, I could, you guys see the black rectangle in the middle of the screen? I could click that and make it go up or down by clicking the black rectangle either at the bottom or in the middle to make it go up or down. And these texts are always complementary. So just like on your computer, if I'm scrolling down through the verses up top, it will change on the bottom, whether I have a commentary there, whether I have another English text, or whether I have a Greek text as well. And if you look with me at the very middle of the screen, you'll see it says GNT 28 tagged. And if I want to change that, all I'll do is click on that, and then I have a selection of other texts and modules that I can choose from to complement the text that I have up here. So let's say I want to compare the ESV, tagged with Strong's, with the NIV. I could click that and then compare these two together and scroll them together. Put that down. On the top right, you have the search function, which you guys have already seen, and you have a lot of the same strong accordance search tools that you have on your computer on the tablet. So later on today, you're going to look at uh, how to search for different grammatical tags, whether verbs, whether imperatives, whether the genitive nouns, and you guys will learn that a little bit later on today, but you have that same capability on the tablet. You can search for different commands. Uh, and again, you can choose whether you want to flex search. You can set the range to chapter, verse. You can uh, look within the Old Testament, the New Testament, and so on and so forth. On the top left, you see that you can search by word or by verse. So if you wanted to find out who in the Bible had no parents, you might search for Joshua and see that he was the Son of none. Thank you very much. I'm here all day. So that is the search capability there. To the left of the search capability is the 
display settings, and just like on your computer, you can make it bigger, or if you have bad eyes like myself, uh, make it much bigger. And if you're reading in low light or night conditions, you can press the night mode, and it will go, go into a night mode reading. You see below night mode, it says uh, all display settings, right below the night mode. And if I want to modify just this ESV text to either make the text bigger or to change the background color, I could do that here. And then if I wanted uh, my ESV text to look like this all the time whenever I opened it, I could click this use as default for ESVS on the very bottom, and that would make the settings that I have on it right now default whenever I open the ESVS. But I want to clarify, if I modify the settings for the ESV here, it will only modify the display settings for the ESV. If I wanted to modif modify the display settings for every single module, I'd need to go into the general settings, which we'll do a little bit later on. So save that. Now, just like in accordance on your computer, you can uh, search a word and find the instant details for that word. So if I want to click on Joshua, I see the Hebrew behind that word. And let me go to the New Testament here. And let me pull up a Greek text. All right here, GNT 28. All right, on your instant details, uh, let's say I want to find uh, the information for Genesis in Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. I click on that, I highlight it, I let go, and it shows me the instant details. And you see, where are my instant details coming from? The UBS lexicon. Now, I have BDAG on this device, and let's say I want the instant details to be BDAG instead of the UBS lexicon. What I can do is I can go to my library up here. I can go to my Greek tools. I can press edit on the top right. And I can move BDAG up above the UBS lexicon. In your Greek and Hebrew tools, the module that's at the very top will be the module that it defaults to in the instant details, just like on your computer. So finish that all up, and let me go back to our search capability. And now, when I click on Genesos, excuse me, Geneseos, I now have BDAG in the instant details and all of the extra information that it contains. Now, if I want to highlight specific words, let me get out of the Greek here. If I want to highlight specific words that are uh, important in the text that I'm looking at, all I need to do is click on that word and click highlight. And then it highlights it uh, so it jumps out to me in the text. Now, let's say I'm going down here and I find a word, let's say king, a worship rather. And I want to do a word study on worship. What I would do is I'd just click on that word, and then I'd go to search, and I've got two different options to search. I can either search the word for worship, which would find every single time that worship occurs in the entire Bible, or if I searched by key number, it would search the Greek word behind the English word. So even without knowing any knowledge of Greek, you can do Greek word studies with this capability. So I click on key number, and now it's going to search for every single instance of proskuneo in the Greek New Testament. But it's showing it in English. And many of you know that Greek words translated into the Greek New Testament will have different glosses. It translates differently. And that's why it's so helpful to search for the Greek term behind the English word. And if I want to go back to my original search, I can just press back by clicking on the top left. Moreover, 
If I want to look at this in BDAG itself, I can click the Amplify button and then search the key number. Oh, excuse me. BDAG doesn't work for English words. I'd go to the Greek, click on Amplify, search the lemma, and now I have the information straight from BDAG. And now I'll go back. You guys saw already that clicking on the module name will show you the different module options that you can choose from, just going up or down. Let me look at, uh, look at the top left with me. Just like you can use the search function on the top right, the magnifying glass, so on the top left you have your outline icon. And if you click on that, you can see all the different books or chapters of the module that you're in. So if I wanted to go to a different book, I would merely click on it, click on the chapter, click on the verse, and then I'm right there. One other thing that's helpful about Accordance on iOS is let's say you only know English and English is notorious for the second person pronoun, you, right? Because if you're not from Texas, then you don't know whether I'm referring to you as in all of you or you as in one of you. So the TIV has not yet come out, the Texas International Version, until it does, many decades from now, you can click on a word using instant details. So I'm in Ephesians 2.8, clicking on your. We don't know whether it's singular or plural right now. I click on it, see the instant details, and I see that it's a pronoun from humon, second person plural. So when Paul's saying, and this is not your own doing, he's saying, this is not y'all's own doing. It is the gift of God. Now look with me at the top left. I'm clicking on the library tool. Now the first thing that's gonna show up in the library tool is what you just recently <laughs> opened. It's gonna be the text that you most often use. Again, Accordance has been designed for ease of use on the iOS device. But look with me at the bottom left of the screen. Once you grab, get your device, once you download the Accordance app, which is free online, you can click the bottom left icon and if you're connected to the internet, I'm not connected right now, but if you're connected, it will show all the modules that you have available. Some people like to put all their modules on. They've got a lot of space. Some people like to put only a few of their modules. What you do is you'd select the modules that you want on your device and then easily install those. And then once they're there, they stay there, even if you lose Wi-Fi connectivity. Right to the right of that is the sync function. You saw how I highlighted a word uh, just a few minutes ago. So if I'm, if I'm doing study on my tablet and I highlight a bunch of words and I go home tonight and I want to see on my computer the words that I highlighted on my tablet, what I would do is I'd set up a Dropbox account, which is very easy to do and it's free to do and you can do it through this device. And then if I'm connected to Wi-Fi, I would hit the sync button and that would sync the notes and the highlights across all of my devices. So what I've done earlier in the day on this tablet, I now find at my computer at home later in the evening, as long as they're connected through Wi-Fi. To the right of that is the system preferences. And many of these are self-explanatory. If you want to modify the text displays for every single text, the default displays, you could do that here. Moreover, if you, again, if you have connectivity to the internet, you can set up your Dropbox account under user content syncing, link to Dropbox. You can check out your Accordance account and you can uh, adjust other settings as well. On the bottom right is the little question mark. That's our help icon. If you're connected to the internet, you can click on that and it will link you to Accordance Online where you can ask questions on forums, try to troubleshoot, figure out any problem that you might have. Now on to the library. You see that all of these texts are laid out straightforward. Uh, let's say I don't know where a specific tool is, but I know the name of the tool. What I'd wanna do is click in the top for the search library and just type in the name of that tool that I'm searching for. So let's go to a dictionary, Erdman's Dictionary. 
I would type that in and it will immediately bring it up for me. Let's go back to the library. One other thing I want to highlight is how helpful using iOS on a tablet is for looking at pictures. So if you're in a module that has pictures as part of it, you can click on it and it blows up the picture in a way that you can also zoom in very close many times. So if you're doing Bible study and you want to understand greater geography, uh, go to a module that has a map and you can zoom in as much as you like. And then go back. And finally, you look on the top right. If there's a module that you need, you're connected to the internet and you know exactly what it is, you can click on the store icon on the top right and that will take you to the Accordance store and you can see new releases, current specials, and you can buy those and download those exactly to your device. This has helped me incredibly because it's easy to use, it's convenient, and most of all, it's accessible. Whether you're with friends out to lunch, whether you're just wanting to uh, look at a commentary, whether you're doing daily reading of your Bible in the morning, or whether you're traveling overseas and you're teaching, Accordance iOS can be with there with you. I hope you guys have been served through this presentation and I hope using Accordance will grow your love for the Word of God.